Hey everyone, this is Dieworm and today I want to do a deep dive on the last epoch skill, the black hole. Enjoying last epoch content? Consider subscribing. You are probably wondering on a daily basis why the sun in our solar system is always roughly the same size. The sun is basically a giant mass where constant nuclear reactions take place. And we know by now what nuclear reactions are capable of. It is extremely destructive, but it also results in a big outward force, an explosion. You would think the sun therefore would expand, blow up. But stars like our sun don't do that yet, because there is also an equal force pulling them back in. That force is their own gravity. Because the sun is so massive, it has huge gravitational pull and all the explosions going on are in perfect balance with gravity, which is why the sun doesn't change in size. At some point in roughly 5 billion years, this perfect balance will be permanently disrupted. The sun loses too much of its mass with helium and hydrogen being converted into other elements. Because of all the nuclear reactions, there's not enough helium and hydrogen left. The outward explosions are winning from the inward pull of gravity and the sun will in fact blow up and become first a massive red giant star, maybe even consuming earth in the process, only to eventually cool off again and become a white dwarf star. In the cases where not the outward explosion wins, but the gravity wins, a star doesn't explode, but it implodes. The gravitational pull is so high that it pulls the star inwards, making it implode, and that way a star becomes much smaller at the end of their life. If a star at this point in time has enough mass, it is capable of forming a black hole. The implosion will be so powerful that the entire thing will collapse under its own weight, it will implode, creating ultimately nothing else but an infinitesimally small dense point, a singularity that pulls everything in its environment to its very core, which is what we call a black hole. It is so dense and full of gravity that nothing can escape from it, not even the quickest substance in the universe, light, hence the name. And now for one of the smoothest transitions in YouTube history, Last Epoch also has a black hole. It is a skill. Some of you may have specked into it actually. So why all this stuff about our solar system and black holes? Well, because first of all, I'm interested in this as you might have noticed. Second of all, I've seen the skill notes and they are in fact very smartly designed. It is almost a homage to astronomy, this skill, the way it's implemented. The person designing this didn't just slam a bunch of cool names together, but must have had a decent understanding of black holes and how they work before naming the skill nodes. For example, time dilation, which blinds enemies. In reality, when coming near a black hole, because of its enormous gravitational pull, time and space are actually distorted and dilated. This is already true for our own Earth. Satellites orbiting the Earth have to deal with slightly distorted time and space because of the gravitational pull of the Earth, which bends time and space ever so slightly. Images and GPS are calibrated to correct for this bending, to ensure the data is correct. Massive and supermassive, increasing pool area and damage per nearby enemy, are in fact categories of black holes. A supermassive black hole has swallowed multiple stars, planets and other objects and can usually be found at the center of galaxies, including our Milky Way. Black hole normally deals cold damage, but you can turn the skill into a red giant, making it deal fire damage. It is a clever use of what happens to different categories of stars. Like I mentioned, our sun would actually become a red giant for a bit. It would in fact scorch planets and swallow them whole in fire. So 150 fire penetration seems correct. I think a few things would indeed be ignited as well. When I saw the binary star node, it warmed my heart a little. This isn't something you come up with without doing some proper research. You see, some of the earlier research on black holes was done using binary stars. Binary stars are simply two stars that revolve around each other. Their own gravity makes them circle around each other. Just like the Earth's gravity makes the Moon circle around the Earth. Or just like the Sun's gravity makes the Earth circle around the Sun. A binary star is therefore nothing spectacular, apart from the fact that it is two stars circling around each other. These stars would sometimes be named a hot and cold companion, with significant differences in temperature between the two stars. Make no mistake, these stars are still bloody hot, so hot and cold are definitely relative in this instance. 
So what does this have to do with black holes? Well, one of the main issues with black holes is that you can't see them because there is no light escaping from them. That makes it difficult to prove their existence. However, scientists discovered certain stars that were behaving like binary stars, but they couldn't find the second star. It was clear, however, that a star was circling around an object similar to a binary star, but the scientists couldn't see the second object. This was the first proof and observations for the existence of black holes, which were the only objects with enough gravity to make another star circle around them. It's fitting, therefore, that in the last epoch, the black hole in this example deals cold damage, while the star circling around it deals fire damage. The naming of the node itself isn't completely accurate, however. A black hole could never become two stars again. Nothing comes out of a black hole. It should be named a binary system instead of a binary star. And the description could say something along the lines of Black hole is accompanied by a star, with the black hole dealing cold damage and the star dealing fire damage. After all, a binary star would be two stars, both dealing fire damage. A binary system can consist of the black hole and a star, hence cold and fire damage. That is if you want to be scientifically accurate, but there's enough proof in the design of this skill that the developer tried to be accurate, I think. This naming may just be an oversight. It's early access. If this change would be my contribution to a skill note tooltip, I would die a happy man. If not, I'll be fine either way. Singularity at the bottom right is very accurate as well. The infinite small point with massive amounts of gravity that a black hole eventually is at its core is what is known as a singularity. Singular because it is a single infinite small point. I suppose it would deal more damage. Armageddon doesn't really make sense. Yes, black holes would swallow meteors as well should they pass in their orbit, but black holes and meteors have really not much in common otherwise. Maybe it's a reference to the movie as well. That was a decent movie, actually. There are a few other cute references out there to black holes. The event horizon, more damage, is the area or the horizon where light is still faster than the gravitational pull of the black hole. In other words, it is the area where theoretically you can still escape the black hole if you would be traveling at the speed of light in the opposite direction. Don't stop me now. However, if you passed the event horizon, events that happen afterwards, so inside the black hole, would be no longer registered to anyone watching the black hole. Because everything we see is in fact simply light particles hitting our eyes, without light being able to move outside the black hole past the event horizon, we don't see anything, any events, that happen within the black hole. Finally, to end at the beginning, the Big Bang most likely caused by a singularity exploding and creating the entire universe that way around 14 billion years ago. In the last epoch, it causes an explosion at the end of a black hole, which is pretty close to reality. And that is all on black holes for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. It's a cool skill with cold damage. Thanks for watching and making it to the end. See you soon. Bye bye.